If you listen to a lot of the experts speak on the future of AI, you get the general impression that humanity is heading towards one of three possible outcomes. People like Bill Gates, Sam Harris, Yuval Harari, Nick Bostrom, and Elon Musk have at least considered or reiterated one of these possibilities. The scenarios go something like this. Scenario 1. Human beings will probably be destroyed or suffer some kind of regressive event before achieving superhuman intelligence. In this case, we either suffer a fate similar to the dinosaurs or we enter some kind of regressive state due to our own actions or natural causes. This isn't exactly a hopeful scenario and puts an immediate end to the conversation, so I won't discuss it any further. If you disregard the first scenario entirely, then we're definitely heading towards achieving superhuman AI. All the signs are there. Computing power is increasing exponentially, and we're continually experiencing exponential technological change. Not to mention that companies are investing billions of dollars in advancements in AI in order to make this all happen. It's not a matter of if we will achieve superhuman AI, but when. This gives rise to scenarios two and three. Scenario two, AI will make us his house cat. These are the warnings that have been echoed by numerous experts in the field of AI. If we create an intelligence that is superior to ours, that intelligence may in fact become the dominant species. It becomes very hard to predict how that intelligence will treat us. Just consider how we treat what we consider to be the lesser species on the planet. It isn't exactly always benevolent, to say the least. This is a potentially very serious threat and is a significant existential risk of developing superhuman intelligence. Scenario 2 doesn't sound like a great outcome. It's a scenario where we will have very little control or even understanding of what's going on. We will essentially be dumb compared to the other. This takes us to scenario three. Scenario three, if you can't beat them, join them. In our current biological state, we can't possibly compete with superhuman AI. We do not have the bandwidth to keep up. Our rate of input is slow and our rate of output is much slower. Computers process information much faster than we do. In order for humans to even be relevant, we will have to merge with AI. This is Elon Musk's plan behind Neuralink, and it's why Neuralink is such an important company. While Elon's venture, OpenAI, focuses on the safe development of artificial intelligence, Neuralink gives us a chance to not be a house cat, to merge with AI, if you will. Musk launched Neuralink in March 2017 with the goal of creating high bandwidth machine interfaces to connect humans to computers. As Tim Urban states on Wait But Why, Elon is essentially trying to create a wizard hat for the brain. This isn't exactly an easy task. The brain is an incredibly complex structure and there's a lot that we still don't understand about it. Neuralink's approach is to take the parts where we do have some understanding and go from there. They're taking more of an engineering approach as opposed to a scientific approach. Connecting our brains to the cloud. In order to connect our brains to the computers or the internet or even the cloud, we need some substantial improvements in brain machine interfaces. BMI research is still in the relatively early phases. We already have tools that are able to record neuronal activity and interact with neurons. Technologies like fMRI, EEGs, ECOGs, and local fuel potential. These technologies range from non-invasive to completely invasive. They also range in scale and resolution. That just means how many neurons they're able to record simultaneously versus how detailed those recordings are. Despite how early we are in the game for BMIs though, a lot of advances have already been made in terms of the medical field. In their current state, BMIs provide the most impact to people who are disabled or who have suffered brain injuries. Compared to other parts of the brain, we seem to have a decent understanding of the motor and visual cortices. A lot of BMI research has thus focused on how to use neuronal activity to restore motor functions through manipulation of objects. The advancements are really impressive, however, they are still one way. What that means is they're good for outputting information. We still have difficulty in terms of inputting information with BMIs, i.e. stimulating neurons. This is a harder problem, but is needed to provide feedback to the brain. For example, while the lady in the video is able to move the robotic arm, she can't exactly feel the surface of the thermos in the same way someone who is not disabled can. This requires a stimulation of neurons. The challenge here is that it's much harder to stimulate neurons than record neurons. Neurons don't work in isolation, but in association with other neurons and neuronal activity. 
Researchers are now making strides in this area with brain-to-brain -brain interfaces. The early experiments started with rats. However, they're now being scaled up to humans. On September 23, 2018, researchers at the University of Washington in Seattle published a paper on the concept known as BrainNet. In the experiment, three individuals collaborated to play a game of Tetris. These individuals were all isolated from each other. One functioned as the controller, while the other two were able to watch the game on screens. The two isolated individuals were able to send signals to the controller about which way to rotate the pieces by looking at certain colored lights. It's kind of like telepathy. These results prove that brain-to-brain -brain communication and therefore brain-to-cloud communication is at least possible. The real challenge for Neuralink is to improve the scale at which neurons can be recorded and stimulated as well as to increase the resolution. Currently, around 500 neurons can be recorded simultaneously, but in order to really improve our bandwidth, or the rate at which we're able to process information, take it in and spit it back out, it's estimated that we need to have 1 million simultaneously recorded neurons. Stevenson's Law versus Moore's Law There are two competing laws here, Stevenson's Law and Moore's Law. Stevenson's Law says that the number of recorded neurons doubles every 7.4 years. Moore's law, on the other hand, states that computing power doubles every 18 months. The laws aren't exactly matching. In order to have this wizard hat or neural lace within the near future, or even in this century, we need Stevenson's law to behave more like Moore's law. What's more is that this technology needs to be non-invasive or minimally invasive. The idea of making alterations to the brain to merge with AI is already a difficult concept to wrap your head around. That's essentially becoming a cyborg. It definitely isn't going to be something a lot of people will buy into if the procedure is even the slightest bit complicated. It isn't even something people will buy into, generally speaking. There needs to be a sort of smooth transition in order to have widespread adoption. Researchers and startups. A lot of work has already started on non-invasive innovations that can increase both scale and resolution. Some of the results look promising so far. In 2010, researchers at the University of Illinois developed an interface made of silk, while in 2015, researchers over at Harvard University published a paper on an injectable neural mesh that unfolds runs inserted into the brain. Tests have already been done with mice. It isn't just universities developing BMIs. There are a number of other startups, along with Neuralink, that are seeking to capitalize on advanced BMI research. Kernel, a Silicon Valley startup founded by Brian Johnson, plans to develop technologies that radically improve and expand human cognition. Open Water, also based out of Silicon Valley and founded by Mary Lee Jepsen, is working on some potentially groundbreaking brain imaging technology based on holography, optical physics, and sound. The technology is able to focus down to the level of individual neurons and has major implications for non-invasive brain-machine interfaces. So yeah, we're becoming cyborgs, although Elon argues that we're already cyborgs through enhancements via our digital cells and smartphones. In some sense, that seems true. If we are in fact able to connect our brains to the internet directly though, it drastically changes our concept of what it means to be human. We will be superhuman through AI. We will be AI. It's a difficult concept to imagine. If all our minds are connected online and to the cloud, then our minds are essentially connected to each other. We'll be able to communicate telepathically, share our feelings and ideas through thought and innovate in an instant. There are still a ton of dangers, planting ideas into others' minds, mind hijacking and hacking. All these ideas come up when you consider the implications of a neural lace. There are a lot of other implications, some we can't possibly even imagine yet. We're definitely living in an interesting time. We're at the tipping point of the technological innovations that may forever change humanity.